welcome to Chew the Fat. This is our first edition and it's brand new. And basically I just want to chat with locals, get to know them, a little bit of their story. And numero uno, ladies and gentlemen, is Bo Labor. He's the head coach. Overwhelming to think about. Oh, Lord of mercy. I think you're going to do fine. <laughs> I have a, I have an inkling that this might be your gig. Um, but he's the head coach for the Stillwater Ponies football team who are uber successful. Does that give you a big head at all or make you feel nervous? We've had some bumps too. So, you know, the game itself has a way of grounding people. Uh And anytime you think that you're pretty cool, they find a way to set you back down. Level the playing field a bit. Yeah, that's how it goes. That's fair. And then you teach at the local high school. Yeah, I teach social studies. So I have an AP econ class, which is fun because you get the really motivated kids that want to take the AP test and get college credit. And then I have uh, government. So I have all seniors and everybody's pretty mature at that point. They're ready to move on to the next stage and they, they're willing to do what they have to do to find that way. Yeah. Did you always want to study those two subjects? Well, it's kind of weird. I wanted to be an elementary teacher okay. initially, which looking which back is- Which is rare. Like there's yeah. not a lot of male- no, oh, and it was teachers. it was uh, kind of born out of the fact that I'm the second oldest of seven children. That was going to be one of my questions. Well, so I have seven. five younger siblings, and okay. four of them were brothers. But my sister, we just kind of treated like a boy, and so. See what you mean. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, and yeah. so we, uh, I taught a lot of kids how to walk and talk and play games hmm. and throw balls and catch balls. And uh, so it seemed very natural to want to get into elementary teaching and coaching. But then when I got to college, it was like, you know, you learn a little bit more that if you want to be a head football coach, which oddly enough, I knew I wanted to be a teacher and a coach when I was in eighth grade. Wow. I know it's kind of, it's weird. That's, that's pretty about. cool. Uh, it was, it was nice, but it was weird. And uh, I learned that it's not a good mesh to be an elementary teacher and a high school coach. Mm. So that's when I pivoted and went, uh, all right, I'm going to go secondary. But then I was, the easy choice would have been Fayed. Yeah. Just because that would have been a good fit for me. Yeah. But St. John's didn't have Fayed. Uh So it was on to social studies, which was a really good fit for me. And I I like being in the classroom. That's cool. Yeah. Kind of all the, you know, knew I was going to be a teacher, but didn't know I was going to be a social studies teacher. Yeah. Fun fact, I started as a FIA teacher. That's oh. what I started going to school All for. Right. And then I went to one of the classrooms and I did not like how the kids weren't listening. I was like, I don't think, I, don't think I can do this. <laughs> yeah. So kudos to you because you do have to have a special demeanor to work with kids and to motivate them. Thank you. I want to learn back. Okay. So a lot of children. Where did you grow up? Yeah. I grew up in South St. Paul. You and did. Yeah. So not too far from here. And uh, very similar to Stillwater, small town. We didn't we didn't have a downtown like this, right? So it's kind of got the the old school blue collar roots in a lot of ways, uh, but it's got the downtown that that comes with it. So there's some benefits to uh, being in Stillwater, yeah. But it yeah. kind of reminds me of home, yeah. And South it's St. older, Paul. like South yeah. St. Paul. I've heard that about that community. It's tight. Yeah. So yeah. when you say St. Paul, you think of something so big, but South St. Paul has a tight community. So you graduated from there as well? Yep. Okay. And then next, you gave a little of your college yeah. story. No. So from South St. Paul to St. John's, and a lot of that has to do with football. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll say football saved my life because sports in general kind mm-hmm. of, you know, got me on the right path. I was kind of a troublemaker in junior high. Mm-hmm. I got into a lot of trouble, drew a lot of negative attention to myself. Like what, what were, let's get some dirt. Oh, what what did you do? There were some things. I, um, I caused a lot of problems to a lot of <laughs> teachers that just were kind of, they were game for it. And then I always took it too far. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I, I with I, I'd probably get in trouble if I if I shared some of this stuff. But, um, I um, we want I've the... got some classic write ups though oh. that should be framed. Oh, um, like the notes that were sent home to your parents. Yeah, yeah, probably the most. Like if if you want it, like where I was going with with this whole thing, I think the song like the song "Me So Horny" came out in fifth grade, <laughs> right? And just a classic that song. Fifth graders aren't supposed to know <laughs> that much about that song, but I actually got the entire lunchroom at Lincoln Center Elementary in South St. Paul, which included like some third and fourth graders to to chant 
Oh, yeah. The refrain. This this feels like a good idea. That that resulted in <laughs> a couple of months of sitting in the hallway during uh, lunch, and and the worst so, part wait, is I didn't get the... to go outside. I didn't get I didn't get to go to recess, which you needed. Which Naughty I needed more than yeah, need I needed recess. to run. I mean, good kids need. We right. all need recess. But right. wait a minute. So you had the whole, yeah, the like whole lunchroom. The, the kids are old enough to to me pronounce so it. Horny. Yeah. They, <laughs> so that, that's pretty. So good then, art. then it gets better though. Uh, <laughs> and, and this is just the beginning. Like it got worse in like seventh and eighth grade, I think. And then I and then I started to figure it out. But what's uh, the most classic is my principal, uh, Mr. Otto, who was tough. Uh, and eventually became like a very close friend of mine when I would see him at a, a particular golf course. He sat me down and he, you know, started the Inquisition and I was just kind of like, it's it kind of funny, you know, <laughs> and, and everybody did it. It was, it, I was pretty surprised that the younger kids picked it up so well. And he was like, you know, that humbling thing again, yeah. he was like, I got to knock this guy down. Yeah. And he's like, well, let's just, let's, you know, usually we... I, do, I'm, I make the phone call home for you, but this time you're going to make the phone oh, call home. And I was like, Jesus. oh, like, <laughs> no. it was slouch down in the chair. Oh, oh my God. But it, it gets worse. It gets worse. So he dials the phone number. He didn't have to look it up. He already knew it. And uh, he already knew it because he called you home. So he often? called home a couple of times. Okay. My poor mother. Oh. Uh, but <laughs> even worse is when he dials the phone number, he asks for my mom and then my heart drops even lower it's the worst thing ever my mom's not home and he's talking to my grandma oh no Grand <laughs> oh. oh my grandma lived with us uh from oh. when we moved into the house that my parents still live in uh oh, when i, I was about that. five wow. uh, years old and lived with them a long long time until uh she had to go into a nursing home uh towards the end of her life but so i'm like Oh, it would be tough to talk to my mom. Oh, oh! But I've had to do it before. I can do it again. Right. But then, if it's like, oh my God, if I have to explain this to my grandma, like you know, oh. pillar of the Catholic Church, oh. Uh, oh. always talking about uh, Jesus. You know, well, yeah, it being good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Friday night mass. Oh. Saturday night mass. Oh, my stomach Sunday hurts. Sunday morning mass. <laughs> and so he's like, he basically is like, well. Uh, Liz, you know, she had like five different names. Well, Liz, uh, today, uh, your son, and then he started to explain it. And yeah. I was like, oh, my God, he's actually going to go there. He's going to make me tell my grandma that we were chanting, oh, me so horny. <laughs> and then uh, he kind of hit the brakes and he said, well, you just let your daughter know that I'll follow up with her. Oh, and oh, you got he, lucky. Yes, he did. But then I, I got hurried home, and I was like, Mom, Mr. Otto's going to call you, and da 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 yeah. which yeah. was pretty wise. Yeah. yeah. Well, he probably- <laughs> softened the blow. Oh, yeah. She gave her a chance to kind of figure out some Read. witty remark uh -huh. uh, and talk my grandma off the ledge a That's little bit. That's what I, you know, he could have <laughs> made her life shorter with that commentary. It was oh, a good call. Goodness. But I mean, that was, yeah. So was I, you. That was what I meant by like, you know, took things maybe a little too far, um, you know, and it kind of started in fifth grade and sixth grade a little more and then more in seventh grade and and more in eighth grade. I didn't try as hard as I could in class. But um, what ended up happening is, you know, coaches would talk about like, hey, you've got some potential and you work really hard and you're a really good kid on the court or on the field or whatever. And you're a good kid in general, but, you know, you're, you're bringing negative mm -hmm. attention on yourself. You're mm -hmm. causing too much trouble. And yeah. from now on, we're just going to hold you out of practice and games. And so that happened a few times. And Motivation. By, yeah. By ninth yeah. grade, it had sunk in. Um, there was a couple of tough lessons and, you know, <laughs> side stories along the way. Yeah. But uh, it kept me um, in, a, in a good place. Like yeah. I wanted to play and I wanted to practice and I wanted to be good. So mm -hmm. I started doing that in the classroom. And so, again, I think I'm a teacher partially because I'm the second oldest of seven. Yeah. But also because... I had a lot of teachers that were pretty good to me. They weren't, you know, just kind of he's a lost cause yeah. or, you know, we're, we're done with this kid. They, they were patient. They saw your potential. Yeah. And, yeah. and so you kind of hope like, you know, 
it's different for every kid, yeah. right? And uh, I, I know that I've been that to some kids. I'm not going to be that to every kid, but hopefully some of the other teachers and coaches in our in our buildings and in our world yeah. can hopefully do that for a kid. Yeah. That's the hope. Um, so when you think about the different coaches, what, what sports did you play? Mostly football, okay. basketball, and then – I did a bunch of things in the spring, tennis and baseball, and I kind of realized I had too many balls in my life. Yeah. I had to <laughs> cut it down <laughs> to, a little bit. Had to cut it down. And so track just fit everything. Okay. So yeah. I just, and I liked running. You so. did that. Okay. So when you think back to all of those coaches, which one was the most influential where you're like, man, if I'm a coach someday, I want to be just like. Right. Well, there were a bunch I, and I, I, I would feel badly if I didn't mention many of them, but like growing up, I, I thought the head coaches, Mr. Bjorklund and, and Mr. Dipburner, those guys were like, they were who I wanted to mm. be. And, uh, but the one that probably had a huge influence on me was coach Buckley, Mr. Buckley. Mm -hmm. I had him as a teacher his first year when I was in eighth grade and he kind of solidified for me somehow that I wanted to be a head football coach mm -hmm. and a teacher uh, at a very young age. But when I was in ninth grade, we were getting ready to go to the ninth grade, sorry, check that eighth grade, eighth grade state tournament. And we were doing the swimming lesson, right? So we were going over to the pool and we were supposed to swim and it was a Friday and we were all dressed up. And I was like, this is the state tournament. I don't want to be swimming. Wait, wait, why did you have to do the swimming lesson? Was well, that it's just part of Fayed. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And, and so I showed up to the pool in my school clothes and he said, you better go find your swimsuit and get in it right away. And I was like, I don't have it with me. He said, <clears throat> you go better go find something and get dressed. And I was like, we got the state tournament tonight. And he said, I don't care. He's like, you, you got plenty of time to rest before the game. You better go get suited up uh, or you won't be playing at all. And I said, <laughs> I paused. And I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but I said, gee, Mr. Buckley, why are you being such an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, now you really aren't playing. Oh, and uh -oh. so that was it. I sat down and sulked. Uh, he stuck it to me. I missed the first game of the state tournament. Wow. Yeah. Okay, just pot. Which was very impressive that he held the line. That's what I'm saying. I yep. don't think, I think it's a threat very often. It was often. like perfectly executed. Like he told uh, my coach, my coach told the head coach, the head coach pulled me aside and said, what is wrong with you? What are you thinking? I sat there and watched the game. My parents had to drive me to like Monticello for them to sit and watch me sit. Oh, that's a rough <laughs> and go. And then bring me back. And mm -hmm. but then, um, you know, the next day was a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, and that's the that's the thing is like when, you know, if you have to go the punishment route, like you have to find what people really want. Like yeah. I really wanted to play, and so I started realizing very quickly that if you do things that are not very wise, mm -hmm. or if you do things that are inappropriate, then there's a consequence. Yeah, there's yeah. a consequence. And it was a big one for me. And uh, he and I are, are still close friends. Yeah. We talk regularly. And uh, it's funny because on you know Christmas Day, I pulled up my text message and said, Merry Christmas, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't forget about it ever. I love uh, it. And, uh, but it is a good lesson. And uh, there were a lot of those. Uh, but um, that helps solidify yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. You know, you have a baby girl now. And I remember when my kids were young, I needed to find that thing. Like for you, it was sports, but it's like your magic tool of like, if you don't, then blah, blah, blah. And uh, I'm sure you haven't found it yet. She's too young, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. How old is she? <laughs> yeah. Right now it's uh, diversions. Diversions. Yeah. 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 You don't want to open up this drawer and I don't want to put the magnets on it yet. So <laughs> yeah. you'll find that secret something with her. Maybe it'll be sports too. Right. Maybe that'll well, I, be. I, I, see, I mean, obviously every parent wants their kids to be able to explore whatever they are mm -hmm. passionate about, whatever they care deeply about. But selfishly, I think Ashley and I both hope to death that she really likes sports. Yeah. We're both three sport athletes and, and love sports and love being active. And if um, her early life is any indication of that, it's going to be that way. We've just got to 
We just hopefully get lucky with which sports that uh-huh, is. Uh huh. I mean, hopefully the ones you enjoy watching. But it's... yeah, yeah. Oh, you never know. Uh, Jedi mind tricks will be uh, very, very important. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jedi mind tricks are always important. Yeah. Yes. There you go. So okay, <clears throat> who do you look up to in the coaching world? So not people from your past when you were young, but when you look at whether it's other high school or college coaches, maybe not even coaches, but just people you kind of align with that you're like, mm, I'd like to be like them. Yeah, well, what was really nice is because I knew I wanted to be a head coach, I was kind of always on the lookout for like, why is this person a good head coach or what would I do maybe differently? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I was fortunate to play for good head coaches. And then I got to play in college for the winningest football coach Mm -hmm. in the history of the game and John Gillardi at St. John's. So nobody in the history of the game has ever won more games. And he had a very unique way about how he coached. Uh, and so you get like an extreme version of, of one way of coaching. And then you see in the media, you see kind of the other extreme. And most of us probably fall somewhere in the middle. Uh, but that said, rather than identify one, I, I would say I, I feel like I was a, a little bit on the savvy side watching these people. Mm-hmm. Because when I became a head coach... I instantly got involved in the Minnesota Football Coaches Association and said like, and it's funny because the executive director still remembers that I walked up and I said, I'm here to serve. <laughs> and it was like the the perfect thing I to say that. to him. That's right. It was yep. exactly what he wanted to hear. Yeah. Like the MFCA is a lot of time. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of extra stuff, mm-hmm. but it's an opportunity to give back to coaching yeah. and to football, which is the only reason why we do what we do to begin mm-hmm. with, give back to kids, give back to communities, give back to schools, give back to the game. And so what I was able to do was sit down and regularly be with like four, five, six, ten times a year, like these giants, mm-hmm. right? Like the most successful high school football coaches in the state. I get to be with them. They're now my friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when something comes up, I got all kinds of guys that I can mm-hmm. ask. Mm-hmm. And along the way, you know, every any coach that is worth their salt is really good at bag, bagging, borrowing, and stealing. <laughs> yes. So it's uh, a form of flattery. Pilfered from them big yes. time. Yeah. yeah, we all do that. Yeah. What do you think is your secret sauce? If I were to pull in a couple of your players and say, what is it that Bo does that helps you achieve or helps you be a better man or helps you be a better player? Right. Well, I guess what I would hope they would say is that they know I have the big picture in mind. Like every team wants to win state championships and uh, go to state tournaments. And we went to the state tournament this year and it was, it was a blast. And you get to see that, that incredible joy that comes out of kids when you're competing at that level. But whether we win all of our, most of our games or we have a rough season, I think all of our kids would be able to say, that I got the big picture in mind. We spent a lot of time identifying the right way to do things. Mm -hmm. We spent a lot of time giving back Mm -hmm. to the game, to youth, to elderly, to people in need. Um, We are, I think our kids would, will resonate with the concept that giving is receiving Mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives. uh, And hopefully they'll choose to do that. Um, So that would be my hope. Mm -hmm. Uh, They know that it's not uh, just about, winning and losing um, first downs and tackles right but but you know what can you what can you use from this experience as you go forward in life do you think you got a lot of that from when you were really young and it's birthed a little stronger as you've gotten older or where did you get that sense yeah I've, well I I've I, I think I've always had a sense of service mm-hmm. um, I think I get a lot of that from my grandma mm-hmm. actually like What's so your name? Well, she was just granny to granny. me, <laughs> and she had. Yeah. Okay, I, I, when I was really young, it was very confusing because I was like, "Mom, who's Betty? Oh, that's Grandma. Mom, who's Liz? Oh, that's Grandma. Who's Lizzie? Oh, that's Grandma." It's like, well, why does Granny have so many names? She's Granny, right? Got so, uh, like, she was, you know, the the grandparent uh, who lived with us and became essentially became like co-mom yeah right of seven children 
So it allowed, so my dad was gone all day working. What did and he do? He's a construction guy. So mm -hmm. he had to get up early and he got home late and he worked really hard. So you very quickly in our family, you learned the value of a hard day's work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we enjoyed going work with him when we were young. Yeah. And then we kind of, you know, realized unless if we're getting paid, we don't want to go with him. Yeah. <laughs> As we got older. And I worked two summers with him, which, again, like reinforced, like, you will get that degree no matter what. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, uh, but Grandma was home uh, all the time, uh, made so much food, did so many dishes. We had no dishwasher. She did so much laundry, folded even more I mean, laundry. seven kids. Yeah. I mean, forget constant. about it. Always. Right. Yeah. And, and so, and, then, and that freed up my mom to take us to everything. We were signed up for everything. We did everything. So they had a nice little, you know, factory set up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But my grandma really, she just, she loved taking care of us. Mm. And uh, she just kind of, she didn't want a lot in return. She mm. wanted to go to church a lot. She she had a little garden that we weren't supposed to play in. It was called Granny's Garden of Eden. And if you hit the ball in there, it was automatically two strikes. Two strikes. Yeah, if you had two strikes, you're automatically out because you had to sneak in there and not get caught mm -hmm. yeah. uh, uh, with the ball going in there. And so tons of sacrifice yeah. uh, and just being willing to give of herself to us was a really, you know, and, and the same with my mom and dad. I mean, they didn't have – they. They weren't uh, asking for much other than to, yeah. you know, have the opportunity to parent us. And, yeah. and, um, and so you, you know, I think that's kind of, you know, give more of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Be a person that is, that is trying to give more than they're taking and uh, bring something to, you know, your friendships, your relationships, mm -hmm. uh, your family, your community, like, be someone that's willing to give more than, than you receive. And, and that's, that usually means that people probably, you know, people will appreciate you yeah. or, or you, they'll want you to be around yeah. even if they don't like you. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> football is this portion of our life, right? And if you're able to teach them all those values, it carries much, much further. Yeah. You hope so. You right? hope so. Yeah. You I get mean, that opportunity. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at, I, I gave you a couple of examples of like youth where, um, you know, it's, you know, it was formative learning opportunities yeah. and a lot, and it had a ton to do with sports. Yeah. And that's not, you know, for other kids, it might be music or mm -hmm. art or, um, you know, their lemonade stand or yeah. whatever it might yeah. be, but something, yeah. right? Something that, that, that makes you excited about waking up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Bo. So if you weren't coach extraordinaire and teacher, you could do anything in the whole wide world. What would you do? Probably like the owner of the lumberjack and the mad cat. <laughs> Good <laughs> no, answer. No, I, in, in all honesty, like you have a very, very cool job. Um, so you're going to have all kinds of opportunities to chew the fat with, with really cool people. But, you know, what's really uh, lucky for me is part of that whole teacher and head football coach thing in eighth grade um, in high school, I actually kind of morphed into, I want to be an activities director mm -hmm. and a head coach because that's what my basketball coach was. Uh, ah. so, uh, got my master's degree right, right away. Like, you know, it's part of how you get paid as a teacher. Right. So you, you, you always try to do it right away and it makes you a better teacher. So it's a no brainer. But then I decided I wasn't going to go and get all the rest of the credits to fill out, you know, the, the teacher pay schedule. Uh, I was going to wait because I thought I might want to be an administrator at yeah. some point. And so I didn't do it until like 2014, 15, 16. So uh, what's nice is I do really enjoy the administrative angle of coaching mm -hmm. and school. Uh, and when you're a head football coach, you have a ton of experience with being an administrator uh, it's such a big sport, so many things going on, equipment, yeah. players, all that stuff. You have to embrace that stuff, yeah. the administrative angle, and, and you have to let go of a little bit of like, I want to call all the plays. I want to uh, coach everything. Right. You can't really do that. No. And so I've always enjoyed that part of it. And so that's why I went back and got my administrative license. 
So, so that could be it's, it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. It, that, that would be, you know, and, and, um, I'm really happy right now, mm -hmm. but what's really nice is like, if I feel like I would ever need a change or if there is the right opportunity, mm -hmm. then it exists. Yeah. So I've, I've always enjoyed the administrative angle of sports. Okay. I think that's fair. And when you run a football team, I mean, how many players are on your team? Well, like, yeah, I mean, we, we've experienced all kinds of ups and downs in numbers as far as football with mm -hmm. what is going on in the media or not going on in the oh, media. Sure. And so, um, We've had nine through 12 programs anywhere between like, you know, 150, which has been more recently what we've been accustomed to and all the way up to like 225. But uh, looking forward to uh, this fall because, you know, not every kid that played football last year is going to come out. And most right. of them uh, we expect to come out, but we also expect to recruit a few more kids sure. we call it recruiting the hallways find another couple of kids that are in other sports or need something to belong to yeah and we get those kids out but if every kid came out which is kind of a good estimate we'll we'll be closing in on 200 again oh, that's really so good. yeah that's really it's exciting it's nice to have the numbers kind of coming back and that's something that people all over the country are experiencing post pandemic yeah you had a bit of a drop off and now people are wanting to engage. Right. Yeah. Well, when they're talking about, you know, you can't play football ever again because you'll be injured the rest of your life. It's which is which couldn't be further from the truth. And people believe it. Um, we you know, we've all experienced a little bit of a dip and then the pandemic strikes and it's like, oh, my God let's get out there and do something. Let's be a part of something. And we've seen, uh, you know, a resurgence of that. But, um, you know, the, the fact that we've moved away from that and the fact that the pandemics happen, I think we've got better numbers yeah. and a better situation and, and we can all enjoy that. Yeah. I think for kids to belong and feel that they belong somewhere is a huge deal. And yeah, it's a great opportunity for that sort of plug in. And that. yeah, we'll take anybody. There's a, there's an opportunity you heard it here. <laughs> there's what well, we have. We, we think we can find a role and it's yeah. not always going to be the, the role that everybody wants necessarily, but a role for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, everybody wants to, wants to be a record setting, quarterback or right. linebacker but uh to be you know part of a team and to be part of you know something that's bigger than oneself is is part of growing up mm -hmm. and then hopefully that kind of steers you in a direction where you know what to look for when it comes time to you know be in college or in a a working environment yeah. or yeah. a family yeah. you'd yeah. hope yeah well ladies gentlemen boys girls whoever is watching party people um, really great opportunity to get to learn a little bit more about Bo and his life. And that story is going to resonate with me for a long time. I really who, enjoyed it. Who would have thought that you would, you know, be mm. talking about elementary school, me so horny. I know. I mean, that's kind of the magic that happens in elementary school though. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but thank you for, it's been fun talk and yeah, thank you. I appreciate being a part of Chewing the Fat. Chewing this has been the very fat. fun. Yeah. So tune in next time. We're going to know mm -hmm. other locals and find out their story. Thanks.